Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is the Teacher Cast podcast, and today we're going to be talking about how you, as a teacher, are able to create amazing digital learning lesson plans for your students. We've got a ton of examples for you, and I've got plenty of guests to describe how things are happening in the classroom. I am looking forward to today's show. If this is the first time you're checking out everything, over at TeacherCast, don't forget to subscribe to us and smash that like button. We would love to have you guys a part of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Other great things happening on TeacherCast these days, we have an amazing section over at educationalpodcasting.com that's going to help you guys create audio and video lessons into your class. If you're looking to bring podcasting into your students, check out everything over at educationalpodcasting.com. And if you're a tech coach like I know so many of you guys are out there, Don't forget to check out our Monday podcast, Ask the Tech Coach, and you can find all the information about that over at askthetechcoach.com. So one more time, thank you guys for being a part of the TeacherCast educational family. Today, we are talking all about the secrets to success. My first guest is a tech coach in the great state of South Carolina. I want to bring on Miss Susie Dover. Susie, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm so great. Thank you for having me. It is so great to have you here, tech coach to tech coach. What are things like in South Carolina? Things are really innovative and creative. I can't even wait to go through some of the great things our teachers are doing. Um, It's just a really fun time to be in education. I heard your teachers are doing some amazing things. Talk to us a little bit about your school district. How do you how do you work? Are you you Google, Microsoft? What, What does your school district look like? We are, I am so lucky. I work in Greenville County Schools in South Carolina. It's a really large district. We have um, a really amazing superintendent and associate superintendents that allow just a lot of autonomy into the schools. Um, One of the things that that creates is that our teachers have a lot of creativity and flexibility in the classroom. And right now that has um, been apparent in distance learning and e-learning. So how can we connect with students um, on multiple platforms? Forms and how can we connect with students in multiple ways that really makes them successful, um, both in the classroom, online, and in life. Um, being college and career ready is such an important skill that we are trying to um, really put into our students right now. And we have definitely seen great strides with um, integrating technology into the classroom and curriculum. Well, thank you for being on the show today. I am looking forward to talking all about the stuff happening in the classroom and really getting into the distance learning stuff. I want to bring on our next guest today. She is the head of regional professional development for the North Region at Promethean, Miss Kate Mazota. Kate, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Hi, so great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Talk to us a little bit about yourself. What is Promethean doing these days? Well, what is Promethean not doing as far as anything to do with our Promethean Academy, our Learn Promethean page, and our awesome support resources when it comes to our videos, our manuals, and all of our online e-learning opportunities. There's, of course, several great things happening over at Promethean. All the links to the stuff that Susie and Kate are going to do are over on our website over at teachercast.net. Check it out today. Don't forget to subscribe to that podcast. Susie, I want to start with you today because, you know, we have a lot of tech coaches that listen to this show looking for advice on how to best support their teachers. I know that's something that you do. Tell us a little bit about your tech coaching. Do you have one building, multiple buildings? What does a typical day for you look like? So I'm in a local school. I work at Stone Academy um, of Communication Arts. So we're an arts integration school. Um, We are a G Suite school. We're a Google school. We do everything off Google platform. Um, It's a great fit for us because there's so many creative outlets um, on the Google platform. We um, typically we spend every day with kids. Um, I work locally at that school. And so I model lessons. I teach media arts to kindergartners through fifth grade. We have elementary broadcasting that we do every day. Um, We're doing a lot of things to try to, um, you know, expose kids to as many digital resources and media art opportunities as they have. Um, So every day I'm working with teachers, working with kids um, and rolling new ideas out um, and really kind of deepening learning through digital means. So let's play the tech coach game. I'm an elementary teacher and I come to you and say, I want to start a podcast. What do you suggest? 
Um, well, it depends where you are as a teacher. We get a, I get a lot of teachers that say, I want to start a podcast and they've never, you know, figured out how to even get a Google site. And so we take like five steps back and we say, OK, number one, why? Like what what need is it meeting? Um, what is your purpose for doing it around? What content is it? Um, and so, you know, I could throw out a million, not really a million, but a bunch mm -hmm. of podcast opportunities. Um, but we try to scale it and say, OK, well, if you're if you're trying to um, review content, what can we do that you already know well so that you can do it to a depth and a level that your students will actually um, engage with and that you're comfortable doing? And so we try to scale um, big ideas to make them manageable and sustainable for teaching. Because I, I am a teacher and I love a big idea. I like to say, um, yes, I'm going to make this huge platform and I'm going to update it daily. And I'm also a mom and a technology coach and a teacher and lots of things. And so we really want it to be sustainable and engaging. And so we are always looking for new opportunities, but reasonable opportunities. So that is um, definitely advice I have to teachers when they come is saying, let's make sure it, number one, it's aligned to content. And number two, what's your method? What's your purpose? Okay, that was an easy one. I'm going to do one more for you, if you okay. don't mind being on the hot seat. I'm a yeah. fifth grade teacher, and I'm doing the same mapping geography lesson year after year after year. What do you got? I want to do something different with maps. I want to do something different with explorers, maybe Ooh. one of those kind of topics. What do you got? Um, so just like software solutions, we are big Pear Deck and Classflow users. Um, Classflow is a um, Promethean um, opportunity and Pear Deck we do through Google Slides. Um, we do a lot of one-to-one -one engagements. The other thing that we are loving right now is GimKit. GimKit is a really kind of new innovative gaming um, kind of review exposure um, tool that we have been using a ton of, especially third, fourth, and fifth. There's a lot of economy to it, a lot of um, kind of competition, and that has been really fun. And I've gotten some of my most resistant teachers really engaged with their instructional technology component of their job through that GimKit platform. You know, I love it when, te when tech coaches come on. Obviously, we're, we want to use the word student learning, student engagement, but I love it when tech coaches use the word engagement, right? Like all of these different ways to get kids up and active. Now, your school district, like every other school district, recently needed to think a little outside that box. And you yes. started to train your teachers, not just on the in-classroom engagement, but those distant learning engagements. Talk to us a little bit about that. Is, was that easy? Was that a switch? How did you guys go from traditional learning to distant learning? Um, well, the first thing I'll say is I think it's really important that all teachers have the theory and pedagogy behind instructional technology. I think a lot of times we throw devices at teachers and say, hey, good luck. There's a school thing that you know how to use in every other component of your life. But when you put it in a classroom, it has to be used really differently. And so for us, I think um, teaching pedagogy, teaching theory, like why do you use shorter videos? How do you engage, um, you know, content that's a video. So whether it's through like Discovery Ed's SOS strategies or whether it's through um, clipping out and putting teacher created content between the videos, um, just really finding ways to teach teachers how to use the massive amount of content that's online, um, being really specific, making sure they know um, what they're looking for online, how they are hoping to use it and why they're hoping to use it. Um, I think that's really why we've seen some success in distance learning or virtual learning, or even, I mean, flipping the classroom, as people say, um, I think it's because they know the theory and the pedagogy. And it goes beyond SAMR. SAMR is a really important um, skill in understanding how to develop these um, lessons. But I think it's really, you know, getting into the depth of how and why and choosing the right platform, um, like why they would roll something out, how they would do it, and then making sure they have the right tool to do it. You know, it is about having that right platform. It's about knowing how to manipulate and to use those lessons. Kate, let me bring you in here. You, as a member of the Promethean team, get a chance to work with school districts and classrooms around the country, dare I even say around the world. Number one, what is it like recently needing to really interact with teachers and students on a completely different level than maybe we had in the past? Yeah, sure. So the first point I want to make is that the quickest way to start off a new school year, or quite frankly, any point in the school year, is to overwhelm teachers with multiple implementations. 
really there needs to be a true thought process there. And as Susie was saying, SAMR is a really great way to implement that slowly but surely so that it is effective. Um, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with SAMR, that's substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. So that's a model that um, allows people to integrate technology. It's a great way for educators to develop digital learning experiences. And quite frankly, this methodology splits tech use into four different categories. So you don't, it's almost like a, a progressive model. And when it comes time to evaluate teachers, administrators should be looking for ways to improve instruction rather than judge and truly know that when a deficit is being discovered, we need to be offered more relevant tools to really tackle that in a timely profession and in a better way for professional development resources. So when it comes to providing those professional developments, when it comes to bringing in things like the SAMR model, TPAC, how do you define success? What does it look like? I think that's a question that all of us kind of strive to find the answer for. And I think it does depending on what school district, what grade level, but, but in your opinion, uh, Kate, what does success look like? And can you say, what does it feel like? Sure. I think that the biggest part when it comes to integrating technology, success is not um, using things like what font is important for the writing. It's more along the lines of guaranteeing effective learning through resources on the internet to enhance that writing. So for example, online resources like Google Apps for Education, Classflow, online testing, resources that provide immediate feedback, that's what success looks like to me instead of inappropriate use of technology where sometimes students are just searching the internet or choosing the perfect color for the paper that they're going to write a research item on. Now, Susie, let me bring you in here because I want to ask seriously the same question. When you're working with different teachers, success means different things. Success looks like different things. How does a tech coach know if they're being effective? And how does a tech coach know if they're being successful? One of the things that we um, try to do is get really solid data if it is actually being successful. And so whether that's through this testing or um, whether it's through summative testing at the end of the year, that's, you know, scary and, you know, big. And we used to not have good tools to really um, see if our teacher was relevant to it. Um, now we do have great tools. So Master Connect has been a game changer for us. Um, if we have um, implemented you know, one-to-one, -one, and we have been using this type of tool to meet student learning, whether it's through um, like a Google Apps creation, like a Google Slide, and we've um, kind of done this flipped classroom thing. We have ways to know that if we use this standard and as instructional technology tool to meet that standard, um, we then have formative assessments through Mastery Connect um, to really see if it was effective. So that's like a data side that we can see if it's successful. But the other way is just like the confidence and, and their comfort of, with the content with the teacher and the student. Is the student comfortable talking about that subject? Um, were they confident that they were safe and healthy and um, found reliable information when using um, the internet and online tools? And did the teacher feel comfortable using them? Because if it's a wear and tear on the teacher's mentality to integrate technology, then we need to take a step back and say, um, that's not successful. So what other tools, what other opportunities do we have to engage the teacher um, to where they can find success. So what does that look like, right? Because every teacher is at a different level. And as a tech coach and somebody who's been working with a lot of tech coaches, it's scary if you're reaching out to that tech coach for the first time and they bring SAMR in and they bring TPAC and data and they're just going, hey, I only ask for a little bit of help. How do we start to formulate that stuff? What resources do you think are critical, not only for teachers, but for student success? And, and I'll throw that one out there. I'd love to get an idea from both of you guys. So I would have to say in this situation, first and foremost, it can be as simple as substituting a piece of in-classroom um, material like a book for an ebook. That's step one. That's replacing that actual held paper book there and bringing in an ebook and letting that student really just navigate through 
um, multiple forms of Audible or Myon or any of those online classroom libraries. Um, I also think, and I'll just at, end, end it with this, but um, it's also executing a new task that was impossible before technology was implemented. So those are things like, for example, what we're doing right now. We were never able to get on these video calls before webinars and conference calling and Skype were invented. So I think that just executing a new task that was before quite impossible is really valuable. I think the other thing that's super valuable in the kind of the local school level is, you know, for me, if I have a really resistant teacher, it's all on me to make the relationship and the networking work. And so I have to make sure that I'm willing to model the lessons to um, get to know those students and their needs and um, kind of the opportunities that they need to have through digital platforms or digital means. And so a lot of it is getting in the classroom. Um, you know, I can, if I have a really hesitant teacher that doesn't even want to come to me, it's, you know, kind of providing the initial content, providing that initial substitution like you were talking about and saying, hey, just try this. Um, this is an option. This is out here. Just see what you, um, you know, they're thinking about how it went. And so I think a lot of it is just that relational level of saying, um, I got you. And then when you got it, I'll be there to support you. You know, it's funny how with all the technology that's happening, when we ask the question of what does student success look like, how do we achieve that? How do we make teachers comfortable? It, you're right. It does come down to the same two words, relationships and conversations, right? It's just a matter of having these conversations and saying, look, we're here to help. Tech coaches are here to support. What do you want your classrooms to look like? I want to ask you guys an, an important question that's been kind of the thread in, in a lot of the podcasts that we've had recently. And it's with one-to-one -one learning, with teachers either being virtual or being in a classroom where everybody has that thing, what is the relationship between the instructor and the front of the classroom? Kate, I want to ask you this one first, but what, what do we do? How do we relate? How do we re-relate to things like our boards, our, our visuals? What can we do to continue to engage in it and implement amazing digital learnings with that great technology that's ever changing in our classrooms? Sure. So first and foremost, as a former educator, the way that I used any front of classroom device, whether it was a chalkboard or a dry erase board or a Promethean board, um, I truly believe that if we are not modeling for our students and not following that focus lesson of I do, you do, we do, it's really difficult to truly have a successful lesson start off. Um, so that, that brings in, and a shameless plug here again, the Promethean panel giving you the ability to bring in um, artificial intelligence models, Google Earth, distance learning of any kind, and getting that immediate um, internet connection right in front of the classroom and to be able to annotate on top of whatever that web content might be, the app that we're using. And as Susie was saying, other sorts of um, external things like Pear Deck and Google Drive and Google Slides that I um, am a big advocate of. But really at that rate, it's bringing in flip charts and modeling, 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 modeling. Susan, let me throw this, a similar question to you. If we're preparing our teachers to have devices both in their hands and at the front of the room, but also trying to prepare teachers to have their home kitchen and their home living rooms in the front of their rooms. How do we do that? How do you help your teachers in, in an environment that is constantly changing, as we've recently seen, could be in the four walls of a school and couldn't be in the four walls of a school? I think that is such a, um, a really important question for teachers because, you know, the classroom environment is constantly changing, whether it's a board in the front or moving back to, you know, every teacher I know right now is like, oh, I, I love having a whiteboard now or whiteboard back because the panel provides that, you know, you have a big whiteboard surface right there that, you know, we've been missing with a big, you know, hunk and uh you know, projector in front. And so I think it really, it's constantly changing. And what I have always hoped for is that we're providing structure in the technology system we have. And so if we can structure um, a really, really systematic rollout 
to make sure that they see the connections between what they've always been doing and to what um, they can do. You know, just a little aside, my mom was one of the best educators I've ever met in the whole wide world. And she, you know, stopped teaching. She retired after 37 years because it, it was overwhelming when technology came out. She didn't know how to make that transition. And so every time I go into technology, every time I go into coach someone through technology, I hold her in my hand. And I think, you know, how can I get someone to go? That's an amazing teacher to be adaptable to all of these different platforms um, that can roll out. So I think a lot of it goes to just a really structured rollout and implementation with a lot of purpose, um, you know, being very intent uh, or having a lot of intention about, um, you know, that good teaching is good teaching. You know, she was saying modeling is so important. Um, we know that, and especially at the elementary level, you know, we know that they need to see it. Um, and so the board, whether it's there or whether you're, you know, uh, with the panel, you can constantly, or with a lot of things, you can constantly pull um, student device screens up to the top. So have a student model. You're just taking it to the next level. Um, so it's things they've always known, but restructuring it in a way that they can see that it's what they've always done to new possibilities and in new ways. Obviously, recently, education has changed, right? We went from classrooms to literally home rooms as we go through with all of this stuff. Susie, as a coach, as a teacher, uh, you know, what do you hope to see the future here? Do you hope that companies are coming out with more, I mean, literally mobile solutions where the classroom could be anywhere? Are you hoping that, that, that things get smaller, cheaper, faster? Like, what do you want to see when we get to next year's round of conferences and next year's group of ed tech companies coming out? What do you want to see in the classrooms moving forward? I think this is a really ideal answer, but I would love to see a consolidation. Um, it is too much to expect teachers to navigate the thousands of opportunities they have and the thousands of information that gets sent to their emails all the time. Um, and so I think a consolidation, I think, you know, when we decided that we were gonna, or that our district was gonna do Google Apps for education, we said, awesome, we're gonna learn every single piece of it. And we don't wanna do anything else for another year. So you wanna, as you were saying earlier, like do a podcast, figure it out on the Google platform. If you wanna um, make a poster, figure it out on the Google platform. <laughs> because we really wanted a depth there um, and to consolidate as much of it as we can. And I hope that technology companies um, and educational resources start consolidating um, so that we can offer teachers some stability um, that they know, like we've had Promethean boards in our building for a decade now, and we're about to get new panels this year. Um, and so we've been able to consolidate, like how many ways can we do what we know is good on this one thing, even though you might get an email that says, this is a really cool new tool and let's like jump all in. Um, we wanna take a step back and say, what companies are out there that are protecting our student data, that we know what they're doing with it, um, that we can trust and have really good data share agreements with, and then really, really invest our time and energy in making that effective for our classroom. So I hope technologies will, technology um, solutions will start to consolidate and say, I'm going to offer as much as I can on this one platform. Kate, I got to ask a similar question here. How is light of the recent activities in education and around the world, how is that making ed tech companies rethink what the future of ed tech looks like? I have to tell you, my, my response is pretty simple. I think that we need to make sure that internet is accessible for all students at home, not just at school. Um, it, where I'm very intimately plugged in is New York City Department of Ed, for example, where half that population doesn't have internet at home. So as much as I love these distance learning and remote learning and flipped classroom ideas, it's we really do need to meet, make internet more accessible for all students and all families if we're going to be holding them to that expectation. And then lastly, really just to ensure that we are providing our students with career and college readiness and truly ready for the real world when it comes to using tech. You know, it's funny. Everything comes down to communication, 
having the right devices, and then really to put a, a word over what we all just said, inspiring, inspiring students to make sure that they have the you know, opportunity to engage, not just with us as educators, but with the environment, with their technology, and with the world around them. Ladies, I want to say, first of all, thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. Uh, Susie, could you tell us a little bit about where we can find out more about the great things that you're doing in your classrooms with your students and teachers? Sure. So I work at Stone Academy um, in Greenville County Schools in Greenville, South Carolina, and we have a website. It's long and cumbersome, but it's greenville.k12.sc.us slash stone, or you can Google Stone Academy. Um, and on there, we have um, an e-learning platform, and we also have... Um, uh, I have a website that builds out media art and coding opportunities and lots of in the classroom things. Um, and so you can kind of follow us around there um, and we'd always be more than willing to answer questions. And we love a good school visit. So if you are having great things happening around, we'd love to come check it out too. So I'd love to connect. Well, I'm looking forward to having a virtual tour of your school because everything sounds absolutely amazing. Kate, thank you so much for coming on the show. And of course, one more time, thank you to our friends at Promethean for putting these shows together. Where can we learn more about the great things happening at Promethean these days? So first and foremost, I would say you need to follow our Twitter page at Learn Promethean. We're constantly on a daily basis uploading active tips and different tips and tricks and videos and guides and resources, not only from the Promethean team, but also from teachers around the world that are using our resources in a stellar way. I'd also recommend subscribing to our, at, um, our Learn Promethean page. We have a blog. And of course, our support site is phenomenal as well. And lastly, that Promethean Academy. I'm so, so happy and pleased with how many teachers are becoming Promethean certified teachers and really accepting that challenge. So please plug into all of those free resources. And of course, we'll say I've done the Promethean Academy um, and done the certification and it is really worth doing. Yes, for that platform, but just for good teaching. Um, it gives some really great um, feedback for a technology coach, but I think also for uh, just a teacher that says, I have this thing, what can I do with it? Um, it's a really great resource. We will, of course, have links to that and all of their stuff on our show notes over on TeacherCast.net. Just do a big search for Promethean. You will be able to see all of the great work that we've done with the, with the Promethean company over the last several years. Guys, one last time, thank you so much for being a part of this show. And thank you guys to the listeners for being a part of our TeacherCast educational network. Don't forget to check out our Ask the Tech Coach show every single Monday. And if you're looking to bring podcasting into your classroom, go over to educationalpodcasting.com. Check out our dozens of lesson plans tutorials, videos, everything you need to bring audio and video into your classroom. And that wraps up this episode of the TeacherCast podcast. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.